All right, so welcome to week two. Uh, this is the official week of restarting school. Well, we are working virtually this week and for the rest of the time, perhaps. So the topic that we will be um, looking at today will be challenges in agriculture. So one of the things that we need to consider before we look at the different challenges is the human population. <clears throat> Around 1930, which is less than a, is about 90 years ago, less than 100 years, the world's population was about 2 billion. And uh, today, the world population is almost 8 billion. And in the future, it is projected that by 2050, by the next 30 years, the population could be as much as 10 to 12 billion human beings that would be inhabiting the earth. <clears throat> so what effect would that increase, increasing population have on our ecosystem? And what, what relationship does it have to agriculture? Well, the main issue is that because we have more human beings living on our planet than ever before, it means that we would need more space for housing more lands have to be cleared for housing. Instead of using those lands for agriculture, people will be using those lands to build houses and cities and so forth. Another effect of the increased population or the rapidly increasing population is that once we have more human beings, it means that we have to um, uh, produce more food. But now we are gonna have less land and we have to use the smaller amount of land that we have available to us to produce even more amount of food than we ever produced before. So that alone, the, the grown population, that alone is something that, that is a challenge for agriculture. <clears throat> so we're looking at the different challenges in agriculture. And uh, one of them is climate and uh, topography. The climate that, that we have would affect the type of crop that we can grow. Take for example, we cannot grow crops that are more adapted to temperatures that are cold. We cannot grow those crops in our country or in the Caribbean. And similarly, we cannot take the crops that are grown in the tropical regions and take it into temperate regions. The temperate regions are the areas or the, the countries that experience winter. The climatic changes may also increase the amount of pests throughout the different um, time of the year. Different time of the year, rainy season, you'll have one set of pests. And dry season, you'll have another set of pests that are going to attack the plants. So the farmers must be aware of these things and they must, need, they must adapt to the changes that are constantly occurring. One of the major changes that is occurring is climate change. Our entire climate system is changing. And that is a big challenge on its own. <clears throat> Farmers therefore need to adapt to the changing climate. For example, they need to develop a proper system of drainage and proper irrigation system to ensure that the crops are, always have a balance of water. Topography, so that was about climate. Topography is referring to the external features of the land. For example, the shape of the land, the slope of the land, the, the hilly sides and so forth. Some mountainous uh, regions, it's very difficult to cultivate crops. It is usually uh, preferable to grow your crops on flat lands. And the reason for that is because we can have machines working on those land. Uh, you can have your tractor going into those land and combine and so forth. But if we have sloped areas, we have mountain ranges and so forth, it's very difficult for machines to work on those land. So those things must be considered before planting, planting or cultivating any crop. In hilly terrain, what is practiced is called uh, terracing. And the terracing is shown in the image on the right. Rural infrastructure, that's another challenge. Um, infrastructure refer to road, the different drainages and irrigation systems that is in place, uh, power lines and even schools. And the reason for having schools or the importance of schools in agricultural community is that the schools will provide education, will provide knowledge to students. And after those students graduate, it's expected that those students um, use their knowledge. 
So many of you who are doing agricultural science here, it is expected that you would use the knowledge that you gain and uh, implement it. Poor infrastructure in rural communities make farming very difficult. If you do not have proper access to the farmlands, well then how are you going to grow your crops? And how are you going to attend to your crops regularly? So this, these problems, if you don't have proper infrastructure and proper school in place in rural communities, and rural communities are like the countryside area, like where Tagore is located, people would eventually migrate to urban communities because urban communities, these are more populated areas, your tongues and so forth. This is where more um, job opportunities are, are present. And in, in these um, urban communities, you normally have small scale farming and you don't have large scale farming. And the small scale farming will not really meet the needs of, uh, for, of the growing population that I've mentioned before. Another challenge is, uh, is extension services. Extension services is where farmers, they have access to exports and these exports are referred to as, um, are called extension officers. Extension officers, these are people who are qualified in different areas and they can go to farmers and educate them and provide knowledge to them about the latest technology and different uh, developments in agriculture, the newest methods that are used in, in producing crops. They may introduce uh, new pesticides to farmers and they may advise them on how they should use those pesticides and they might advise them how to use different fertilizers and so forth. And if an animal or a plant has some disease, you can invite those extension officers. They will uh, visit your home, visit your, your, your farm, and then they will advise you on how you can take care of those pests. So an example, in Guyana, we have Nari. They have extension officers and they deal mostly with crops. So for farmers who have problems, they can reach out to Nari and Nari will provide the technical support that they need. And we also have GLDA, that is Guyana Livestock Development Association. And they are, as the name suggests, they are mostly um, dealing with livestock. So if countries do not have these services available, well then farmers will find it very difficult to grow their crops because they will not know how to manage those diseases that are affecting the crop. And that will lead to um, huge losses. Access to finance. Finance obviously is needed to develop farms if you want to purchase more machines. As a farmer, for example, want to purchase a tractor, obviously they will need more money. They may not have all of the cash that they need to purchase uh, whatever uh, equipment that they need for their farm. So they may eventually have to take a loan from the bank. However, the problem with that is that some oftentimes the interest rate that they have to repay the bank is very high. And it's very difficult therefore for them to even consider taking loans to develop their farm and extend their farm to larger areas. The other issue is Fadiel uh, larceny. Fadiel larceny. And uh, this refers to the loss of agricultural produce due to theft. So a farmer may grow his crop, may spend a lot of money taking care of the crop. The farmer may add a lot of fertilizer, spend a lot of money on the pesticides. And when it's about, when it's about time for them to reap the crop, someone else come and take it away they steal all of the produce. So this is especially common for farmers who cultivate crops that are easy to harvest. You would not find that persons will go and steal, for example, rice or paddy. Um, however, crops like banana and uh, watermelon and so forth, these crops are easy for persons to steal and that will lead to loss to the farmer. And when the farmer lose from his crop, what he will do is that he will increase the price that he ha he will increase the price for the remaining produce in order to compensate for the loss that he made. So the theft actually is going to affect the consumers as well. Guarding such farms will also add cost to the farmer to put to put fence around the farm and so forth, or to put a guard at all times in the farm. That's going to increase the cost of production. Next, we have land tenure system, and that has to do with land ownership. If the farmers do not have full ownership of the land, 
they obviously will not want to invest a lot of money and develop the land. They will not want to spend millions of dollars to make proper drainage and irrigation system when they will not own the land. For example, they may be renting the land. So renting lands, also rented lands, when persons have to pay rent for the land, it will increase the cost of production because after they make a profit, let's say they make $100,000, then a portion of that, of, of that profit have to go towards um, the rented money. Environmental issues. Farming practices can damage the natural environment and we looked at several ways already when we were looking at um, non-conventional and conventional farming systems. So the practice, the farming practices may damage the natural environment. For example, pesticides, when pesticides are used, they will cause damages to the um, environment. They will kill beneficial organisms. For example, the pollinators, for the crops to develop properly, we would need pollinators. And if these pesticides are used indiscriminately, if they are used excessively, they are going to kill beneficial insects and, and, and beneficial organisms. And uh, you would not have pollination taking place. So the, among the produce that you would you'd expect, you would not have that much. Other environmental concerns include the loss of biodiversity. Again, we talked about biodiversity. Biodiversity includes all of the living organisms within the environment. And uh, if you're going to use pesticides and you're going to cut down the trees where the animals are, going, are usually living, the organisms will die. And that will lead to a loss of biodiversity. Also, we have um, pesticide resistance. If you're going to use pesticide continuously, eventually the insects and the different organisms that we're trying to get rid of, eventually years down the line, these organisms are going to develop resistance. And when they develop resistance, what will the farmer do? Usually when the farmer spray a crop, and if they see that the, the insects are still there, they'll increase the dose. And increasing the dose is not the answer because increasing the dose will mean that more pesticide will remain on the plants, on the crops. And when we as humans consume those um, crops, we're going to be consuming those pesticides as well. Also, we'll have a buildup of pollutants. So a lot of pollutants will remain in the environment and the other crops, the surrounding crops that the, the farmer may not be spraying, they, they will also take up these pollutants. Labor availability. Urban areas often have better job opportunities and urban areas, these are more populated areas, your towns and cities and so forth. So if there are more, better job opportunities, um, obviously people will try to migrate and go towards these areas. So the youths, especially in the community, they will want to migrate and they will head to those urban areas where they can settle and have better jobs, better income, and better standard of living in, to in general. And this would result in an aging farming population. So those who remain in the rural community would be persons of older age. There are probably two, two problems with this. In the, the older generation, the older persons, they will not be able to um, use a lot, or they will not be able to provide enough labor to produce a lot of, um, uh, of crops. And the older generation, they will not, oftentimes they do not want to uh, adapt and change to modern uh, farming practice because for them what was practiced for decades they believe that that is the only way that they can cultivate their crops so they will continue to do to use the same old system food safety another challenge food safety through exports and imports of food new diseases can be introduced into countries so take, for example, when we import, um, let's say, apples, if those apples are infected with some disease causing organism, well, then we can, when we import the apple, we can bring in that disease. And then that disease can spread and affect other plants that we have in Guyana. Certain restrictions, however, the government normally puts certain restrictions and these restrictions will reduce or prevent the importation of certain products or certain produce. Example, poultry and beef. Not every country can export their, their poultry and meat to Guyana or to other countries because we'll have to check those meat and poultry for diseases such as bird flu and E. coli and so forth. 
Another challenge is natural disasters. Tropical storms, for example, hurricanes and heavy rains and droughts, these can lead to great losses to farmers. And even in the COVID-19 pandemic, because of the COVID-19 pandemic in some countries, the factories, and we're talking about large farmlands where they would um, produce meat because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, if, and if individuals within that farm area is infected, but then others cannot go and uh, work on that farm. And uh, that will affect the profitability of the entire farm. All right, so that brings us to the end of this week's main topic. There are some other topics that I will be sending some notes on for you to read over and there will be a quiz based on whatever we looked at during this week. So once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask those questions, especially in the messenger group that we have. Until next week.